let the debate begin again or continue, I suppose, about energy. Uh, and, and this is not about using energy. I mean, you know, we've talked about EVs and, and the pressure we're going to put on the grid, but how are we going to produce the energy? Uh, earlier in the program, we talked about uh, wind power, an interesting uh, piece uh, from John Michael McGrath on TVO.org. Uh, about uh, maybe offshore wind power is something that uh, the federal government might want to look at. But even uh, John Michael told us that, look, at, he says it can't be your only source. There's got to be uh, a blend here and a hybrid. Yet in Ottawa, there are still members of parliament of all political stripes uh, that are very upset with the federal government's uh, plan to move ahead with uh, with uh, more nuclear energy. As a matter of fact, expansion of some of these in various forms. Uh, I want to get to our next guest's opinion on what's going on here and, and, and why the sudden pushback on this, which seems to be uh, rather significant up on Parliament Hill. Uh, he is Dr. Chris Kiefer. Dr. Kiefer is president of the Canadians for Nuclear Energy. Uh, Chris, a pleasure to have you back on the program. Thanks for the time today. It's, it's wonderful to be here, Bill. Here we are again, looking at uh, the, you know the fact that okay, this is great about EVs and the pressures on the system. We need to create more energy. We have to produce more energy these days. Uh, this is this is not uh, as, as as controversial, I think, as some people want to say. We've been using, as you've expressed to us before, nuclear energy for a long, long time now. As a matter of fact, sixty percent, I think, of the power generated in Ontario is from nuclear, isn't it? Yeah, you're absolutely right. And that's what has equipped us with our ultra low carbon grid. Ottawa, the federal government is experiencing a seismic shift towards the support of nuclear. They've been at best lukewarm um, or even anti-nuclear. If you think about our uh, environment minister, former Greenpeace activist, Stephen Gilbo. Um, but we're, actually, we're, we're absolutely seeing a seismic shift. Um, we have attracted a German company to Ontario. That's the huge Volkswagen battery plant. Um, because of our ultra low carbon grid, which is interesting. And we've attracted a German company to be here because of our low carbon grid. Germany just shut down its last nuclear reactors and has a grid that is 10 times dirtier than Ontario, despite over $400 billion spent on a wind and solar based uh, energy transition. So, you know, it's, it's an extraordinary accomplishment that Ontario has achieved. It's making us um, a very attractive investment environment for companies interested in lowering their carbon emissions. But of course, uh, we have a lot of nuclear. We're going to need more to support this, this kind of manufacturing coming back to Ontario. I saw a quote here from one of the members who, who's opposed to this, by the way. Uh, she's uh, when Susan O'Donnell, who's a, a member of the Coalition for Responsible Energy Development in New Brunswick. Uh, she says the Prime Minister and his cabinet are getting bad advice about nuclear energy. Uh, I, I would suggest that maybe it's quite the opposite, that, they, that, that maybe they finally had this epiphany that we can't do what you want to do with Volkswagen plants and other things, Mr. Prime Minister, with the current uh, grid that we have and the current suppliers. Uh, we need to enhance what we've got and, and add others to this. I, I don't think anybody's saying, don't do any more wind, don't do any of that stuff. That 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 could be pursued. But you can't put all your eggs in one basket, can you? Well, listen, in Ontario, I'm one of those people saying we shouldn't be doing any more wind, we shouldn't be doing any more solar. And, and that might sound extreme. But let me remind your listeners, we will have spent $60 billion on mostly subsidizing private developers to build the wind and solar we've done so far. It's very unreliable when we need the electricity the most in our summer heat waves, wind is performing at 6% of its capacity factor, you can build all the wind in the world, you will not be able to meet Ontario's peak demand season in summer factories will have to shut down, etc. We've made those investments, they've been poor investments, we shouldn't make further investments there. You know, energy reality is coming back into politics. Um, and that's meaning that we're reconsidering things like nuclear. In the words of the Prime Minister, uh, a return to nuclear. We're very, very, very serious about that. Um, you know, and, and even with the Environment and Climate Minister, former Greenpeace activist in this role, um, who I challenged at COP26 in Glasgow um, about being outside of the scientific consensus. You know, the IPCC saying we need to increase nuclear by between 100 and 500 percent. I challenged him on that. It took two years. But the minister um, actually just said yesterday to prevent global temperatures from reaching 1.5 degrees Celsius, we have to listen to the IPCC. And, you know, I was formerly uh, against this. Um, I now recognize that we need this technology. So, you know, an astonishing turnaround. Um, you, you mentioned this anti-nuclear um, conference that was held yesterday, a press conference. Uh, a single liberal MP um, attended. That's the only one on record for opposing nuclear energy. No conservative MPs 
Of course, the Green Party and the Bloc are there, but, you know, they have a long-standing animosity towards nuclear. So the anti-nuclear lobby is rapidly aging out and losing its influence, and common sense is coming back to energy planning. Oh, by the way, just for the record, that Liberal MP that did show up is the, the former Green Party member that crossed the floor a couple of years ago. Uh, so obviously still you know, embracing some of those policies. And, and to your point about uh, Minister Gilbo, uh, he has uh, been strangely silent on this issue, notwithstanding his, uh, his past record on this. Uh, so I, I'm not sure if he's working under orders from his boss that's to simply say this is the way we're going, like it or lump it. Uh, but he's uh, not as, as strident with any opposition to it right now uh, because there seems to be a mounting body of evidence. I mean, even the International Atomic Energy Agency, which is UN affiliated, of course, uh, has said that there has to be enhancements to nuclear plants right now. You can't depend simply on, on wind and solar because, as he says, uh, nuclear plants don't depend on weather or the time of day, and those other sources tend to do that. Well, again, listen, wind and solar require a backup system that can meet 100% of demand. That's why it's proven to be so expensive in the countries that have pursued it the most aggressively. So Germany has the most expensive electricity prices in all of Europe. And that's because they need to plan for when there's no wind and solar. And they have a massive coal and gas fleet there as so-called storage. You, you cannot mine enough minerals in the world to have the kind of battery capacity to back up wind and solar in a carbon-free way. And it's not carbon-free. Mining is a major, major contributor to greenhouse gas emissions. You know, there's a, a, a British geologist, and he says that we are having, as humanity, such an anthropogenic impact on the world through mining. We're moving, sorting, crushing as much rock as the world's oceans, rivers, glaciers, and wind. And, you know, a renewables-based transition requires as much as a six times increase in mining relative to nuclear. E equals mc squared. You know, Einstein's famous equation. Yeah. There's an incredible amount of energy inside the atom. It means we need to do much less mining. It means a land footprint hundreds of times smaller. It means a mining footprint six to ten times smaller than alternative technologies. Nuclear is the, the environmentally friendly technology. Well, it seems the federal government is starting to understand that. And, of course, uh, the provincial government, uh, who was ready to, to mothball some of these plants, is now reconsidering that. But I, I got to figure we pretty much know which way they're going to go on that. Uh, always great to get your perspective on this, uh, Chris. Thank you so much for the time today. Thanks for having me back. It's a pleasure. Take care. Dr. Chris Kiefer, president of Canadians for Nuclear Energy. 